The IB exam is approaching, it's coming at May, so it's really a busy season. But anyway, uh, last time I do a permutation combination special selection. If you haven't seen it, so go check it out. And uh, it received some positive comments, so I'm gonna do it again on a topic-wise thing. I, I choose something that I think most HL student would have slightly a problem because it's not exactly as a big topic in the syllabus and it show up here and there and it seems that most people have a big problem when approaching this kind of question okay they are inequality proving something bigger than something okay so this is it the inequality special edition okay so let's talk about some background okay how do you how what are the general procedure to prove some uh, inequality right so well, there are a few uh, common ones is that let's say you want to prove that okay want to prove something x is bigger than y okay what are some common strategies uh, the first one that I can think of is you try to subtract y to the other side so x minus y if x is really bigger than y then x minus y should be positive okay so this is one way we would consider x minus y okay so we would consider x minus y and then uh so x is supposed to be some something uh, some formula y is supposed to be something else so you work it out until you get a thing that you can guarantee that that thing is always positive what what, what can that be okay it might be some square thing okay it might be a minus b and whole square and uh, we all know alpha square is always uh, bigger than or equal to zero okay so it depends on the feature of a and b okay if it's a perfect square it's probably bigger than zero so this is one common strategy and this way pretty much uh, can always work there's no condition okay there's no condition on x and y x y itself could be positive could be negative okay so strategy number two okay strategy come number two is kind of considering this okay let's think about what would happen if you know that x squared is bigger than y squared what can you say what can you say okay question can you say that x is bigger than y the answer is no not really because why there's a chance okay that okay let's say let's say x is negative four okay and y y is one okay but if we square them we square them okay negative four squared is 16 16 is definitely bigger than one so we would have established the fact that negative four squared is bigger than one square but does that imply that negative four is bigger than one does that imply x bigger than y well of course not negative four is smaller so you can see that even if you have established that the square is bigger than the other square you cannot just say that x is bigger than y because of the fact that there are negative numbers okay so this is not true if one of them are negative but what if you can guarantee that both of them are positive okay so this is our second strategy if you know okay if you know okay that both x and y are bigger than zero both of them are positive then to show that x is bigger than y is enough to show that x squared is bigger than y squared you can consider it is squared and then you just prove that this is bigger than the other one then automatically x would be bigger than y given that both of them are bigger than zero okay so there's a condition for the second method but I can say this is more common in IB. Okay, so this is it. This is the basics. Let's see how do we approach questions. So the first question that I pull off would be uh, 2010. This is the November time zone, so uh, time zone zero. Okay, it's a paper one. Because uh, if it's a paper two, you can plug this into the calculator. Not much work to do. So it's paper one. So we're gonna want to show, uh, want, want to solve this inequality. We want to solve this inequality. <clears throat> okay uh, well it's not kind of a proof one but a soft one but the idea is kind of the same okay we have an absolute value on the left hand side and absolute value on the right hand side what we know about absolute value is 
they just turn everything into positive. So if you're a negative 4, they make it 4. If you're a 4, just keep it a 4. So after you take the absolute value, everything are positive. So that both sides are positive. What does that mean? That means you can square both sides, okay, according to the analysis that we've just done. So you can square them. You can just consider the square. What's so square? What is so good about square, right? If you're doing absolute value, okay. The good thing is, you think about what the absolute value done. What absolute values do is that it just take away the negative. What about square, okay? If you do, okay, negative four square, it's sixteen. Four square is also sixteen. Therefore, squaring is enough to take away the negative. Therefore, if you have the square. The absolute value is kind of useless because the the function would have been duplicated anyway. Therefore, if you have an absolute value and you square it, the absolute value could be taken away. This is the good thing. After this, it's just easy to expand this. Okay, expand this. Uh, since you're XL, I expect you to be able to expand. We move everything to the right hand side. We kind of one in quick. Okay, uh, one minus one is zero. So both of them contain x. I can pull it out. Just three x minus two. Okay, what will you do next? We'll just say okay. So now x is smaller than zero, or this is smaller than zero. Ah uh ah, -uh, commit a big mistake. Okay, for two things multiplied together to be smaller than zero, that means you want the product to be negative. Okay. If you need this is negative, you want this to be less than zero, and also this to be less than zero. Negative, negative, multiplied together is positive. Okay, you wouldn't get it to be smaller than zero. So that's one common mistake that I see all the time, even from Excel student. Okay, you're gonna stop this. I tell you what, you're gonna need to stop this. So how do you solve this? This is a, a very typical quadratic inequality. How do we solve quadratic inequality? We can just sketch its graph. Okay, uh, quadratic. With three, the coefficient of x squared being positive, that means we're gonna expect the graph to be open upwards. Where the roots, the root are supposed to be zero. Okay, what do I mean, right? The root. I mean, oops, technical problem. That means if you if you consider this to be zero, right? To find the x-intercept, so obviously x is zero, or uh, x is two over three. Therefore, the two roots. Okay, a zero and two over three. Zero, uh, zero is of course less than two over three. Okay, what do you want? You want the quadratic to be less than zero. Less than zero mean lower than the x-axis. That basically means this part. To obtain this part, x should have value between zero and two over three. So this. Okay. Well, so that's it. That's the answer. This is probably the best way, the fastest way of solving. Quadratic inequality. So done. Good. This is our first question. Okay, uh, what do we got next? Okay, next we got a vector problem. Okay, uh, A is about plain stuff. It's kind of basic. We can probably do vector later. Vector is a hot topic in next child, but let's focus on the inequality. Okay, so part B. A, B are not relevant. Let's concern uh, just two given vector that you know nothing about. Okay. There are some uh, preparation steps before you can do step three. But anyway, we just do it quickly. Uh, consider a uh, p dot p. All right, so p dot p. We can just use the formula. What's the formula? The formula is sorry, not cross. A dot b equal to magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between vector a and vector b. You should know this very well. Therefore, this is magnitude of p times magnitude of p times cosine theta. Except, what is theta, right? So you're dotting p and p itself. What is the angle between these two vectors? Well, zero, right? Therefore, if you cosine zero and cosine zero is of course one. Therefore, this is magnitude of p squared. Done. What? And so otherwise, show this, right? So let's do this. 
So you will probably try to start from the left hand side. Okay. Square. Okay. So you have magnitude square, right? Let's try to use part one. It says the magnitude square is just that vector dot that vector. But P is a vector, Q is a vector, you add them up, it's still a vector. So you can take this at this. So the magnitude square is just itself dot itself. So it's P plus Q dot product P plus Q. All right. So uh, I'm going to admit this is not the most straightforward step that you're going to think about. So you may need to have some trial and error and fail a few times. And then you can see that, oh, maybe you go this way. Okay. So anyway, we're going to do dot products. Uh, dot product can expand, by the way. It can expand in a normal fashion. Okay, so B, P dot P, P dot P plus P dot Q, Q plus Q dot P, Q dot P, Q dot Q. Don't miss the dot. Otherwise, get not deuce. Oh, we see this again. P dot P, P dot P is again the magnitude squared. The magnitude squared plus. Uh, by the way, for dot product, it's commutative. You can just swap it around. So it's two times that. Okay. Uh, you should know this. All right. For dot product, you can just reverse it. While for cross products, if you reverse it, you're going to take a negative. All right. Plus Q dot Q. This. Okay. Oh, is that what they want? Well, yeah. Last part. Deduce that. The left hand side is smaller than the right hand side. Okay, a little bit of analysis. What are they? The left hand side is a magnitude. Magnitude means length. Length is always posit positive. Magnitude p is again length positive plus another positive term, positive plus positive, is always positive. Therefore, both of them are positive. So according to our analysis with the second strategy, we can just consider they're squared. Okay, bracket it and square it. Okay, we can square it. And that would probably be a good idea given the fact that we have done something related in part two. Part two. Okay. So let's do that. So we're gonna consider Okay, there's square. And to show that this is smaller than this, okay, we're gonna subtract this to the left hand side. All right? So consider this. Minus. Okay, we consider this. Okay, this is the strategy number one. If this is smaller than this, when you subtract, you are expecting something negative at the end. All right, so let's see if we actually get something negative. Okay, running out of pages. Okay, uh, again, we just expand this, which we've done already. So we copy. Minus. Uh, well, this is just a plus b squared. We can expand that. Square plus 2ab. Again, I expect you'll be able to expand. Okay, and then just p squared minus p squared. That's gone. Q square minus Q square, that's gone. What's left is, okay, 2P dot Q minus negative positive negative. Magnitude of B times magnitude of Q. Again, you are expecting this to be less than zero. Okay, you're expecting this. Okay, so how do we force this to be negative less than zero? Right? Let's first pull the two out, take it out. Well, second, this is dot products. Well, well, we get a formula for that. Cosine theta. Theta is the angle between P and Q, which we don't know what it is, so never mind. Minus. Both of them have magnitude of P, magnitude of Q, magnitude of P, magnitude of Q. We can factor it out. Okay. 
Is this less than one? Uh, is this less than zero? Well, probably. Let's say it is. Okay, you need some explanation. Why, right? This is cosi, right? What is the range of cosi? Okay, if you understand the graph, cosi is between one to negative one, right? Therefore, if you do cosi minus one, it's guaranteed to be kind of negative, or at best, it's a zero. Okay, so less than or equal to zero. This is positive, positive, positive. Positive times negative is negative. Therefore, this baby is always less than zero. Right? You're gonna write down as an explanation why this is less than zero. You're gonna explain, right? It's less than or equal to zero. That guarantee that this guy is less than this guy because when you subtract it's negative, right? So this is less than this proved. And since both of them are positive, you can also guarantee the original stuff uh, 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 in this way. All right. You're gonna write that down. Okay, so therefore, okay, where's less than this? This implies that they're also in this relation before the squaring. Since both of them are bigger than or equal to zero, both of them cannot be negative. Is that? would be a complete question. Okay, well, I would say this is having some level of difficulty in Excel, considering, yeah, but it's not too harsh, you know, just a normal inequality question. The very last thing that I want to show a little bit is this part B, okay? Prove this, okay, under this range, okay? Don't miss this sentence, uh, this statement, right? For this, x is going to be inside this range. You're going to prove this. Uh, uh, a, B are not related anyway. Oh, is it? Maybe a bit. But anyway, uh, the idea is after you've done this, to prove this, you just need to integrate all three of them at the same time from 0 to power of 4. Okay, you will, you will obtain this right away. Okay, so the so B2, I think, is not a problem. Most people have problem with B1. Uh, by the way, this is 2010. So, uh, well, let's try this. Why is that true? Okay, I think I would start from, I don't know, maybe the left-hand side, okay? So first, I want to show that secant x is bigger than one. Okay, secant x is bigger than one. Okay, let's do some analysis. What is secant x, All right? Secant x is one over cosine. And since for the question, the range is 0 to pi over 2, if we look at the graph of cosine, cosine is like this. Well, this is 1, this is pi over 2. So cosine is in this range. Cosine is between 0 to 1. Well, if you have something between 0 to 1, this is 0. 0 to 1, 1 over something from 0 to 1 is automatically bigger than 1. Right, but how do we present this? Right? We want to present it in a nice way. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna use our strategy one. We're gonna consider maybe secant x minus one. Well, we're, we're expecting this to be positive because secant x is supposed to be bigger. Uh, secant x is one over cosine minus one. And then uh, we get a common denominator it's like this. Okay, and then think about this, right? For x to be between 0 to pi over 2, that's given, all right? You can't miss this part, okay? So cos x, according to this, is between 1 to 0. Cos x between 1 to 0. Therefore, your 1 minus cos x, okay, is, well, bigger than 0. Because cos is at, at, at biggest 1, right? So this is bigger than 0. Cos itself is also bigger than 0. Positive over positive positive. Therefore, secant x is bigger than 1. So that's the left-hand side. Okay. Uh, uh, mind that this is important, right? Because if you have another range, then cosine could be negative, and this could be negative, then this is no longer true. Okay, so the range matters. The domain matters, you can call it the domain. Okay, the right-hand side, right-hand side is secant and 1 plus tangent. Let's do that here. I want to show That secant x, sorry for that, secant x is less than or equal to 1 plus tangent x. 
Okay. Well, from the above analysis, in, in this range from 0 to power 2, cosi is always positive. So 1 over cosi is always positive. Therefore, secant itself is always positive. Look at tangent. The graph of tangent looks like this from 0 to power 2. Uh, this is 0 to power for 2. Tangent itself is always positive. If you plus 1 to it, it's also always positive. That means both sides are positive. What can we do then? Well, we can square both sides. So we just consider this. So again, the question is, why is this side bigger than the other side? Okay, so we just consider this minus this, stretcher G1, right? Okay, we square this a bit. And now you may think, why would I try to square both sides? Well, simple reason. If you're good with your formula booklet, okay, even if you can't remember, you should remember something kind of look like this. All right. Tangent square and secant square are kind of related, by the way. So 1 plus tangent square is secant square. So that means this secant square can be replaced by 1 plus tangent square. Right. That's why we consider the square. All right. So this at this link, they're gonna trigger you to try all the different methods. Sometimes you have to do some trial and error. Okay. There's no guarantee that the first time would work. It takes some experience. But if you are not even good with the formula that you have, then probably you're done. Okay. And again, inside this range, tangent is positive. So tangent is uh, this bigger than zero scenes x is between 0 to power for 2. Again, this range matters because there is positive. Uh, it's possible for tangent to be negative. Okay. So yeah, that's it. So this is bigger than this is bigger than 0. That means this part is bigger than this. Okay, technical problem. Uh, yeah, so this is bigger than this. You're going to write that again, okay, to a little bit of explanation. But that's it. That's our inequality special edition. Uh, I admit this video is quite long, so you may want to. Some of you may have paused and you know try some other stuff and then come back and watch it again. That's not a problem, I guess. If you remember our first two common strategy, okay. So that's it. And by the way, uh, the 2014 is a new syllabus, and the IB has published a specimens paper for everyone to do a little bit of practice. We see some new stuff in that, definitely. Also, some emphasis on the new syllabus. So I really, really hope that I can do a breakdown of some of the question probably before April, before April ends. All right. So you can tell me in, a, in comments anywhere you like on which question you particularly like it. I pretty much, I don't think I have time for the whole paper, so I would just do some special questions because some of them are just, you know, it's very typical. Same, uh, pretty much the same as the old syllabus. I won't do those. I have some question in my mind that I'm going to do, but certainly I would hope to have comments. So just tell me, and I'm going to break it down, I promise, before the <laughs> the actual exam, so probably at the end of April. So yeah, see you again. Uh, thank you for your support. I know I haven't done any videos for quite a long time, so sorry for that. Uh, I will try to get back to work. Right. So good luck. Study work. Study hard. Huh?